If I'm quiet, their eyes glide off me, and I remain invisible to them. An Earhardian veil can be very effective. He probably won't stray from his route. The pipes are manufactured both locally and in Azadir, and they bring them in by the boatload. They must require thousands of them to cover the city. According to the labeling on this crate, it contains flintlock pipes. My veil helps, but if I get too close, he will certainly see something. That's the shipment I'm supposed to destroy. There's black powder in this barrel. They use it for the muskets and cannons. It's a powerful explosive and propellant. A handful should suffice. Leviathan oil. They hunt the great beasts for this precious fluid. It's used as illuminant and for lubrication. Steel nails, imported from Western Azadir, I reckon. They're used to mount the pipes around the city. A nail, fresh from the steel mills. This might be of use to me. It's a sturdy rope, probably soaked through with brine. I need to stay out of his sight. That should be enough black powder to ignite the barrels and blow the whole shipment to pieces. A steel nail. Good steel. This might even be Nagali steel, the best there is. No expense spared. That should be enough black powder to ignite the barrels and blow the whole shipment to pieces. Go on, get out of here!
This must weapons, if Liko is correct. I'm supposed to find a way to destroy these. Noisily. with oil. It should work as a burning fuse now. Flintlock parts for the muskets. Flint pieces for the flintlock muskets. Flint can make no spark without steel. People still keep their heads down around Azadi military. They must fear the worst. messages between checkpoints. That's the boy I'm supposed to intercept. passing messages between checkpoints. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, let's see. Which way is it again? It's so hard to see anything in this light. Right, left. Left's right. Uh, um, uh, left. That's the boy I'm supposed to intercept. The sign reads, Earthrin's Ascent. It says, Watcher's Court. Runner passing messages between checkpoints. Ah, let's see. Wait, wasn't it left? Not right. Right, don't sound right. But hey, signs never lie. Right it is. for this boy's death. <laughs> the dead runner's message, sealed with an Azadi mark, probably destined for the tower. I would have to break the seal. No. The mole would know I'd opened it, and she might not be very happy about that. Our agreement may be forfeit. Shadow's name, you came out of nowhere. He shouldn't be out here so late. They frown on that sort of thing.
the Azadi return to get proverbial back scratched. There's no need to antagonize the Mole. If I want her to give us weapons, I must play by her rules, no matter how deceptive she may be. And my mission was to get the weapons, not to spare a runner's life. The Mole deceived me. She said the runner would be unharmed, and yet they killed him. I can see no reason for his murder other than vengeance and cruelty. How can I trust someone like that? I can't. He was just a boy. He'd harmed no one. Does she hate the Azadi so much that she's been completely blinded? Why did you have the runner killed? Good question. Why did Azadi see the need to kill Banda children? Because one day they think Banda children grow to be Banda women and men, and then they come for Azadi. Better make sure this never happened. We have no time for this. I know my people have committed atrocities. We are not the only ones. What's important now is to make sure this never happens again. And we need this one's help to win the war. If she has something on her mind, I should let her speak. One death cannot compensate for another. This is true, Azadi. Retribution may be counterproductive. But your people must also be made to suffer for their crime. They need to see the consequence of their action. They need to feel pain. And that man, that boy, he was in wrong place at wrong time. He's safer this way. He cannot run back and tell on us. Or on you. You talk about making my people suffer. But my people know nothing of what has transpired here in the Northlands. You can't lay this at the feet of all Azadi. How do I make them see? How do I make them understand our loss? The Banda Banta are no more because of Azadi. I can gnash teeth and sharpen claw for many moon. It will not change truth. Your people will never mourn mine. But if I take life, make mother suffer the loss of child, Make friend miss friend, husband miss wife. Maybe then someone will think of mine. Maybe then someone will remember our loss. I'm not sure that's how it works. Perhaps not, Kian of the Azadi. But one can always hope. I may not honour that part of the arrangement, but I will honour most important part. Your resistance will get weapon. All the weapon I have to give. I still need some for my men. Sharpest sword, swiftest axe, strongest bow. But the rest go to your people. Not your people, Azadi. Your people rebel movement, otherwise would be silly. Of course. Thank you. My men will be in touch with your women, and also men. Leave now, Azadi. It's dark and late. And I will sleep. Sleep and dream of happier day in Burrow to the north, where laughter of children fill every tunnel. Dream of friend and of family, while I mourn them all. She's a magical, and she obviously harbors no love for my people, or for humanity in general. So why isn't she with the rebels? Hard to believe that such a little thing can command dozens of men and such fear and respect. I hear you run the Mercurian underworld. You hear, you hear, is where I belong. Underworld in Burrow is my natural habitat. But there's more to it than that. You run a criminal empire. Empire. Only human have empire. Only human be empress of empire. Me, I run business. Business in burrow. Underground. Underworld. It's an impressive feat for one so... small. Spoken like big human. Size not matter. Size irrelevant. Is strength elsewhere. In head. In heart. In mouth. 
lucky me. The mole is strong in head, in heart, and especially in mouth. She's a... Why haven't you joined the resistance? The shepherd asks same thing. Why not join resistance? How quickly they forget how they treat Banda before. How they look down on us, call us mole man, mud dweller, snub snout and soil monkey. The magical treat Banda, much the same as human treat Banda, like muck underneath toenail, like filth. I have no love for resistance. I have no use for resistance. But resistance fight Azadi, fight human. So I sell you weapon and food and medicine. And I don't fight resistance. The enemy of my enemy is, well, not friend, but at least not enemy. Whenever she... The Azadi soldiers, they attacked your village? In brightest day, they come and we scurry. Human never good sign. Human always trouble. But never like this. Never like this. We scurry into burrow and we close hatch and we sing softly to earth to make new tunnel. Just in case. Just in case. But Azadi soldier, they have scheme. They are clever. They cover every hole and they throw fire into burrow. Fire that make black smoke. Children, the old, the weak, many suffocate. The rest, we are blind. We cry, we crawl upward, out of burrow. The Azadi wait for us with club and sword and spear. They laugh while they murder. We try plead. They only laugh. I stumble, sword, snip my ear. Not here so well in here now. I knock head, fall into dreamless sleep. When I... My world gone. All because of Azadi. All because of your people. I should... I must leave. Good. Moon moving. Night only has so many hours. After my shift's over. Hey, who goes there? Must have been the wind. The rooster and kitten. Ulfik, the barkeep, is friendly with the resistance. Alvik doesn't have the most sophisticated or upscale clientele, 
That must be the publican. Ulvik, I think his name was. What can I get you, my good man? I'm not here to drink, and I have no use for alcohol. It clouds the mind, confuses the heart, and goddess knows I'm not a drinking I'm not here to drink, and I have no use for alcohol. It clouds the mind, confuses the heart. I have little faith in the quality of the water in this place, but I can at least hold a cup and pretend to be drinking stronger stuff. I do not drink. Well, you'll attract attention standing there without a mug. Nobody trusts a man who has no taste for beer. Here's a merry minstrel. Your friend. She's upstairs. Friend? Yes. Your friend. She's been waiting. You don't want to keep a woman waiting for too long. I should At be getting home. Just one off. more, one more Alvin for the road. Them in check. A bit of Dolmari courage to help me get started. And then I'll head home. Ah, oh, finally. There you are. Sit. Please. I saved your seat. Sit down. You look quite ridiculous standing there. Oh, my job is cursed. Take a seat, will you? There are mostly labourers and dock workers in this bar. It's the perfect cover for the resistance. Fine, don't sit. Just stand there like an idiot. Sooner or later, you'll tire and then you just have to sit. Smile. We're old friends, remember? I don't remember that at all. Who are you? I'll tell you who I'm not. I'm not with the Resistance, and I'm not a Zadi. If you're not with the Resistance and you're not a Zadi, who are you working for? I'm working for me, and I can either make your life easier or a lot worse. This must be a mistake. The publican was clearly confused. This woman is not looking for me. She claims to be my friend and then she threatens me. Not the best way to begin a conversation. Who in Shadow's name is this woman? If she's looking for me, I need to know why. I will have your name. You will have my name. So forceful, so like a caged animal. You're a popular man, Kianavane. Apostle. Everyone wants a piece of you. I hear there's even a bounty on your head. I'm afraid you've left me at a disadvantage. I'll even the battlefield. I have as many names as I have friends. And enemies. Some call me Anna. What do you want from me, Anna? I like the emphasis. You're a clever boy. I want your assistance, but not right now. You're meeting someone. I'd hate to get in the way. How I did you... I just wanted a chance to introduce myself, and now I have, so it's time to leave. Let me up sometime. You can find me at this table most evenings. If not, Olvik can pass a message. Big man behind the bar. Wears an apron with a cock, a rooster, and a kitten on it. Can't miss him. Be seeing you, friend. Wait. How did you see through my veil? What? You shouldn't be able to recognize me on sight, unless you know me intimately. I don't know what you're talking about. Be seeing you, Alvane.
The witch and the vicar had six shots of liquor and presently went for a walk. Come on, said the clergy, a man has his urges, but the witch only wanted to talk. <laughs> Who was that? What? Who? Where? That woman. Who was she? A mystery woman, huh? I don't know. I'm not a guy. I don't go looking at every woman who passes by. Liko? Uh-huh. Did you see a mystery woman? No. God, you need to get out more. Is this place safe for the two of you? What? Oh, you mean this. The face. The fur. This is a safe place. But Azadi drink here. Ulvik keeps it all under control. Also, magicals are still allowed passage in the city as long as they have valid passes and carry no weapons. Visibly. You have passes? Sure do, but we it's- We shouldn't push our luck. It's time to go. Yeah, that. Come on, Kian. You passed Liko's test. You're okay. We'll head back to HQ. Test? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, um, Liko? I told you I would not trust you. And now you do? No. I merely distrust you a little less. But you did well. I won't kill you. Yet. That's him being real friendly, you know. Hugs? No? Yeah, me neither. Okay, we really need to go. Come on. So what did your mystery woman look like? She had long auburn hair and light freckled skin. She dressed like a ranger. Of course she did. Your type, huh? I don't really have a, a type. Really? Guy like you, I thought you'd be super choosy. I'm not a goddess. I've not had much time for for women in my life. Leapfrog, are you joking? How old are you? Look at you, you're gorgeous. But how did that come out of my mouth? Leaping leapfurs? Nope, just nope. You do like women though, right? Shadow take me. Not that there's anything wrong with, you know, in fact, I could have That's said quite enough, with... I know. I don't know, this just happens. It's a sickness. I open my mouth and... Blah! It's really disturbing. Passes. What are you doing out so late? Drinking. Dancing. Just drinking. Next time, go drinking inside the wall. We don't need your kind in our bars. <clears throat> no, uh, you're absolutely right. You really, really don't. Goodbye. Dancing. Right then and there, it felt like an appropriate answer. Tell me again about this test. I expected you to run straight to your mistresses, Alvani. You may be of some use to us for a while. I will still kill you. Nothing you can do will ever repay your debt to my family and people. Cheerful. Debt? Never you mind, Zidling. This is between the Apostle and myself. Zidling? Really? Really? You know, I'm not actually a Zidling, right, Glumbum? I'm of age, and I've already been with several that men- That mouth thing again, Zidling. <laughs> Thanks. Where is everyone? In bed, I guess. It is late. He's right. It's never this empty. Something's wrong. We should hurry. We 
need to keep moving. We don't know how many of them there are. Come on, we need to get to the boat. I don't see any more assassins, but we can't risk it. We need to leave, now. We need to keep moving. We don't know how many of them there are. <sighs> good catch, Kian. That was a good catch, wasn't it, Liko? He survived. It was acceptable. Ah, uh, he's totally warming up to you. Thank the gods of old, our boat is still here. Ladies first. That means you guys. You guys were the ladies. It was a joke. Fine, I'll go first. I laughed. On the inside. You would have exploded. I don't think your body can handle laughter, Lico. 